And Afghanistan is on the brink of collapse. Taliban is running riots in the country, gaining strongholds and inching closer to the capital city, Kabul. After Herat, Taliban terrorists have now captured the second largest city and their former stronghold, Kandahar, along with Lashkar Ga. In fact, this is our detailed report. Let's take a look. Afghanistan is doomed again. Kandahar, Herat, Ghazni. Lashkar Gah. The Taliban is on the rampage again, capturing one city after the other, freeing prisoners, running riot, just weeks after the US has pulled out of the war-torn nation. State Department has said they're going to uh, try to complete this reduction of their personnel by the end of this month. Um, and these troops are being ordered in to help facilitate that purpose, that mission along that timeline. I won't speculate beyond August 31st as to what the footprint's going to look like. Reports suggest that Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, may collapse sooner than anticipated. Taliban terrorists have cut off a crucial highway link in Ghazni that connects with the country's capital city. The United States Embassy in Kabul spoke of reports of the Taliban executing Afghan army soldiers who had surrendered, saying the information was deeply disturbing and could constitute war crimes. <laughs> Afghanistan President Ashraf Ghani has replaced the Afghan army chief. He's also reached out to ethnic Uzbek warlord Abdul Rashid Dostam and ethnic Tajik leader Atta Mohammad Noor to rally the warlords to fight back against the advancing Taliban. The Afghanistan government has accused the Taliban of brutal atrocities and war crimes. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, head of the Afghan negotiating team after the Doha meeting, hit out at the Taliban, accusing them of human rights violations, resulting in a humanitarian catastrophe in Afghanistan. He urged the world to prevail upon the Taliban to stop war crimes. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has deflected criticism of training, arming and funding the Taliban, something that the Pakistan state has continued to do for decades and is doing so even now. The Taliban are refusing and we tried, I, I persuaded, tried to persuade the Taliban. This is months back, three or four months back. The Taliban senior leadership came here and we tried to persuade them to come to some sort of a political settlement. The only thing that would stop uh, Afghanistan from descending into uh, anarchy is a political settlement. Uh, but unfortunately, the Taliban, when they were here, they felt that um, they, would not, they refused to talk to Ashraf Ghani. The situation in several provinces remains extremely tense. Hundreds of Afghan soldiers have surrendered to the Taliban in Kunduz after holding on to the airport, which is now under the control of the terror group. The Taliban has also captured MI-24 attack helicopters that India had gifted to Afghan forces back in 2019. However, reports suggest that the Afghan forces managed to remove the rotors of the helicopter before surrendering to the Taliban so that they cannot be used or flown by the terrorists. Afghanistan is now seeking an immediate ceasefire as the Taliban seem to be pushing towards Kabul. Bureau Report, India Today. All right, now I'm going to take you through quickly as to the kind of capture that Taliban has carried out in Afghanistan. We're looking at these areas, if I can highlight here, these are the dark areas which is still in the control of the Afghan government. While you have the red here, all the red shows you clearly that Taliban is closely inching, in fact, quite close to capturing most of the provinces around the national capital, Kabul. And these are, of course, the conflict areas, the one in orange. So here you see Kabul, uh, which is still not captured, with, where Taliban appears to be about 90 kilometers away from the national capital, fast approaching towards the national capital, Kabul. And here we see, as the weeks have gone by, how Taliban has managed to capture at least 18 provinces, the latest being 
Kandahar and Herat. We just broke that news to you in Herat. We are looking at uh, the police officials there. The army have surrendered to the hands of Taliban. Here, the red area shows you very clearly how Taliban has closed in on the national capital entirely and uh, are just ba barely about 90 kilometers away from the national capital, Kabul. This in red shows you the kind of capture here. 18 provinces on the whole that Taliban has captured here in Afghanistan. All right, I'm going to take you through those uh, provinces so far that have been captured by Taliban. In fact, here, except for Kabul, we're looking at these provinces, including Kandahar, including Herat, Kunduz, which has now already been captured, which has fallen to the hands of Taliban. We're also looking at Ghazni, you have Pulikumari, and also Talkoon which has now been captured by Taliban. Furthermore, we're looking at several other provinces, including Sheberjan, also Sarepol and Saranj. That's now at the hands of Taliban. These are, of course, provinces that resisted Taliban for weeks now, but managed to finally succumb. We're looking at human rights atrocities that have been carried out by Taliban as they close in on the national capital. Faizabad, also Farah, Aibak and Kalaino, Kala which is now the hands of Taliban. Literally, the entire country falling like a pack of cards. You have 18 provinces now in the hands of Taliban and they're soon approaching towards, we're looking at, in fact, just barely about 90 kilometers away from Kabul. All right, I'm going to cut across to our detailed report on Taliban, the kind of terror that's being unleashed by uh, by Taliban there in Afghanistan, quickly cutting across. Uh, the president has ordered the reduction of civilian personnel uh, uh, at our embassy in Kabul. The United States on Thursday urged U.S. citizens to leave Afghanistan immediately and said it was significantly reducing staff at its embassy in Kabul as Taliban fighters continued their rapid advance across the country. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby said the U.S. was also sending 3,000 additional troops to Afghanistan in the next 24 to 48 hours to assist at the airport. So are you concerned they're going to be under attack? As in all cases, our commanders will have the right of self-defense, and any attack uh, upon our forces will be met with um, a, a swift and appropriate response. News of the embassy drawdown, first reported by Reuters, is one of the most worrying signs for the Biden administration about the security situation and the failure of the Afghan government to protect key cities. On Thursday, the country's second and third largest cities were on the verge of being captured by the Taliban. On the same day, the militant group also established a foothold in the strategic city of Ghazni, some 90 miles away from Kabul. Uh, this is not abandonment. This is not an evacuation. State Department spokesman Ned Price on Thursday insisted that the embassy in Kabul remains open, but that staff would shrink to a, quote, core diplomatic presence. This is about uh, doing all we can to ensure the safety and security of our personnel as we reduce the size of our civilian footprint in Kabul. Earlier, a notice on the embassy's website urged U.S. citizens to leave the country immediately using available commercial flight options, citing the deteriorating security conditions. Meanwhile, the U.S. military mission in Afghanistan is set to end on August 31st, and roughly 650 troops are currently in the country to protect the airport and embassy. A U.S. intelligence assessment this week said the Taliban could isolate Kabul within 30 days and take it over in 90. All right, the, the Taliban there captures Kandahar. We're looking at furthermore Taliban ca uh, capturing several other provinces in the state, in the country there. I'm going to cut across to those human rights atrocities that's taken place reported right from the country. Ashraf bringing us that report. A country in turmoil. Its future uncertain. The withdrawal of U.S. troops has cast a huge shadow on stability in the troubled nation, especially with the sheer pace with which Taliban is expanding its stranglehold. Kandahar city is the most important uh, 
uh, we can say a kind of a city which has an emotional attachment with the Taliban because Taliban was ruling her uh, two decades back in Afghanistan their main epicenter and what in the common um, courts the Taliban called Marcus was only this city and they only want the control in the city. The Taliban is just a few kilometers away from Kandahar, Afghanistan's second largest city. Afghan forces are fighting with their backs to the wall to hold them back. इस पहाड़ के पीछे तालिबान ताक में बैठा है कि कब उसे मौका मिले और यहाँ कंधार में अफगान फौजों पर हमला करे और उसके साथ साथ इस शहर में जो कि कंधार का शहर अफगानिस्तान का दूसरा सबसे बड़ा शहर है उसमें घुसने में कामयाब हो। For Taliban, Kandahar is vital because the city's jail holds 6,000 of its fighters. The main focus of the Kandahar is, as we, I was mentioning about this jail, where most of the Taliban fighters are still captive. In fact, when there are operations, any Taliban who is being captured live is being brought to this jail. On ground zero, the situation remains volatile. We are ready for a war-like situation. The biggest problem is that we are short of weapons at the moment. We are always stronger than them in every fight. Most of our firing happens overnight. Amid all the fighting, it's the innocent Afghan citizen who is suffering the most. My son was about to be married and Taliban troops attacked my house and killed him. They didn't even spare my husband and people in my locality. Many have fled the city. More are trying to escape. Peace appears to be a distant dream. The Taliban forces are camping right behind this area. I had gone there once and they tore my clothes. The situation is very volatile at the moment. In Doha, where negotiators have been meeting since September, talks have failed to yield results. The international community is worried. The two-decade-long conflict only seems to be taking a turn for the worse. With Ashrafani in Kandahar, Bureau Report, India Today. Well, it's shocking to see how the Taliban closed in on several central jails, released all those prisoners. And, of course, this is one of the largest heists in modern world. And the implications for India, if we speak of, we can tell you that Taliban's takeover really deprives India of diplomatic influence in the region. The L.E.T. Jesh may use this opportunity to attempt strikes in India. And then you have the pro-Taliban sentiment in Pak that may try to harm India further. China-Pakistan-Taliban nexus, uh, quite a possibility there, a possible threat to India's national security. India now to lose access to crucial Chabahar port.